That little son of a bitch right there. Back to the shop again this week, you guys. We've got our current conundrum sitting on the, the workbench right now. It is a reflexed and deflexed design bow. And guys, I have a uh, link down in the description that you can uh, find the book for this particular build uh, if you are watching this video in the fall of 2025. Uh, if you're keeping up with me in time, like watching this this week that I post this, that book is still in the process of final, uh, final editing, so to speak. So that book will be available very soon, but be on the lookout for that. But in this instance, guys, we got a bow that our intended draw weight was 35 pounds, 28 inches. We finished with this bow at 20 pounds, at 28 inches. We missed our mark by, not a little bit, by a wide margin. Uh, and we got to try and figure out how we can put the weight back into this bow. Uh, you know, it's said that you can't put wood back once it's been removed. And this would be an example of such a... Uh, such an instance. So what can we do, right? Uh, there's a number of different things that uh, are in a, a Boyer's book of tricks, and one of those things would be to take off the tips and, and make the bow a little bit shorter, but we're talking about a 15-pound deficit um, that we're trying to make up, and when you start looking at percentages, it's a pretty high percentage of the amount of draw weight. Uh, the bow is already pretty short, 62 inches from knock to knock. So shortening the tips, not going to work. One of the other things that uh, are a traditional method for, for dry, uh, raising draw weight, and that would be to heat treat the belly. Um, we are not dealing with a white wood in this instance. We are dealing with Epe, and Epe is not going to respond in the same manner as, say, like a hickory or an oak or elm or something like that where heat treating the belly is going to really improve uh, its compression characteristics. Uh, Ipe does not enjoy that same uh, level of improvement with heat. Uh, you can get some, but from what I've understood or what I've learned about, it is just not much. Um, not enough that's going to, again, make up the deficit that we're dealing with here. A non-traditional idea that I had was to... Go ahead and put a bamboo belly onto this bow. Now this bamboo is incredibly thin and let's get an actual number on it. Like we're talking like 0.1 thick here, 0.11, get out here to the tip, it's a 0 0.08, but it is tempered, right? It's tempered, so it'll be good for belly application. Uh, this is going to, this would raise the weight way too much and, and create, you know, another issue that we would have to deal with in terms of, of new weight management issues. Uh, in addition to trying to figure out how to get, how to get it to go up these uh, ramps. The fades then become ramps of a, a three ply bow build. Um, and it's just not, it's not something that's going to work out well for me, uh, or would work well. So, bamboo's out. Doesn't leave us a whole lot of other options, but I'm going to cite uh, something that Howard Hill did in his bows uh, back in the day when they were uh, experimenting with different belly materials, and that is fiberglass. Right? So, Howard Hill would build his all bamboo bows and then layer on the belly a piece of fiberglass. Uh, his, uh, his philosophy, and it has played out to be true, is that your the strength of your bow is derived from its belly. It's not from the back. You know, the safety of, in terms of breakage and tension is in your back. But your, your draw weight, the resistance on that pole, it comes from your belly. And he would put a piece of fiberglass on the bellies of his bows. Uh, so that's really kind of the idea that I am, I'm drawing upon. All right, our first order of business, guys, is to lay out the grip of this bow. Uh, we are going to want to get our fades pretty much finished 
or very close to finish before the application of our fiberglass because um, you know you got to work through the fiberglass and I want to make sure that it is that the integrity is there uh, in the finished product so in the finish product we want that uh, fiberglass to you know, ride up the fades to our riser um, I have some pencil line on here, and I'm, I don't know if, yeah, maybe in the sun you can kind of see it. So I'm going to put a long fade right in here. I have positive tiller, so I've labeled this particular limb the top. Uh, and then just kind of put in the palm swell here, and then cut out a window right here. And that's about the extent that I'm going to go. Uh, it doesn't matter how many bows I uh, you make, I've made, any of that. There is one part of this process, if you are using a bandsaw, that is a uh, bad idea, a real bad idea. And that would be to cut your riser line in this fashion, you know, through the blade like this, for one very specific reason, and that is that this blade is running toward your belly. All right, now, I don't know how many bows I made before I finally put the blade of my bandsaw into the belly of my bow, but it was a lot. And the heartbreak that comes behind having made such a simple error uh, is untold. The amount of work that was done, everything else, to ruin it by simply over, over cutting my line into my belly. Uh, always, guys, always, always cut from your belly out to the back of your riser. Never, ever, ever, and I try not to use the word like don't, so do always cut this direction. All right. to pay attention to there and I don't know if you noticed it but if you rewind and take a look when you get to the end of that cut especially on a hardwood everything jumps forward at the very end bonk just like this and that's what went into my belly when I did that mistake uh, guys always always cut from your belly to the back of your riser when you are uh, using a bandsaw to shape your, your riser fades. Maybe it's fate or just plain poetic that I talked about, you know, ensuring your behaviors at your bandsaw to ensure that you do not have any major calamities with your bow. Um, but if you're anything like me, your shop doubles as storage for things like lawnmowers and uh, the kids' stuff that they decided not to take home or, you know, motorbikes that were project bikes that got started and never finished and I uh, just recently cleaned out my garage to try and ensure that I got all this space, right, to work. Um, but if you watch my videos ordinarily, I take my bandsaw out to my driveway because that's, you know, for a couple reasons. Uh, dust mitigation as well as uh, uh, having the space with which to work. Obviously, this is a pretty confined area. Uh, this morning, I... I'm a little bit pressed for time because we got a, an appointment to be at in exactly one hour from, from the time of this filming. And so uh, here lies my bow right now. And now that my 
uh, fit of rage has come to an end. I want to discuss what we're dealing with here. See that the cut I put in right here for my arrow rest. Uh, and in maneuvering in tight spaces and running band saws, I managed to get a cut on my bow I was not anticipating. And that will be that little son of a bitch right there. Just bumped a running band saw, that's all. Ain't no thing. Well, it's probably the most expensive premium piece of bamboo I've got in my garage that I decided to use on this bow. And then all of the effort, of course, that went into uh, making it not to mention documenting the filming of it, uh, in addition to the fact that this is being built for somebody else. And the lost opportunity now to uh, try the uh, application, the belly application, to see what kind of uh, improvement we could get from that. As it turns out, guys, this is going to be the end of this series. Uh, on a very, very low note, and it is just a, uh, you know, I guess a reminder to everybody to, to make sure that you're aware of the space in which you are working and doing everything you can to ensure that you don't have real dumb mistakes like that. We're talking an instant, one instant. One, one lack of awareness of surroundings, one little issue. And I don't even know how many hours I've got into this bow. It's not a ton, but it's enough. And time, energy, effort, time lost, opportunity lost, all those things. Guys, pay attention to your freaking bandsaw. I'll see you next week.